Hello everybody, today I am going to show you how I made Belle's ball gown, which I'm actually still in the process of making, but I wanted to start editing this video now so that it wasn't super, super overwhelming later when I had to edit, you know, like an hour worth of footage. So if I do a little now and a little later, it'll just be that much easier. Now, I have wanted to make this ball gown for a very, very long time. I got back into sewing around 2016, I think it was, after having taken a little bit of a break, and I made Cinderella's transformation dress for my littlest sister. After that, I had told my little sister that I was going to make her Belle's gold ball gown. The problem is, is I don't have a ton of extra money just laying around to spend on sewing supplies and materials. So most of the time, what I do is I use reclaimed materials. Sheets, curtains, wedding dresses, prom dresses, granny cardigans like I did for this Cinderella dress. And when I tell you I have actually been searching for years to find the material for Belle's dress, that is not an understatement. A lot of the time what I'll do is I will buy a curtain here, a curtain there, a prom dress here, and if I think they have potential for something, I'll hold on to them. And then throughout the months and the years, I'll go thrift shopping and I'll kind of have like a mental catalog of what I have in my stash. And I'll try and find things that can go with it. Because unfortunately, it's not always possible to just walk into a thrift store and find all the things you need for one costume. A lot of the time, it's a bit of an accumulation of finding the things that will work. And I finally found the things that I thought would work. So I had bought this sheet for $3.98. It was a nice sheet. I think it's probably king size. It has like this nice stripey pattern going on and it kind of has little golden hints, which was perfect. And then most recently I had found this nice curtain for $7 at a thrift store. I think that because it was a red tag, it might have been on sale, but it's also possible that I saw this curtain, I saw the price and I just spent the money anyway because it screams bell. It has these nice little golden hints or not even hints it's just like working with straight up gold and all the vines are kind of like little hints to the live action bell movie i feel like so it's just it's perfect for bell the one side is more of a matted gold with gold leaf detailing and then the other side is just extremely shiny gold and then it has like the matted gold viney details now you might be wondering why am i making a golden ball gown when bell's dress is very clearly yellow in the movie i'm gonna tell you right now Thrifting yellow fabric is hard. It's very, very rare that you're going to find a color that looks nice. And it's even more rare that you're going to find multiple sheets and curtains that go together and aren't all gross shades of yellow that clash. And because Belle's ball gown is so huge, you need a lot, a lot of fabric. So sometimes I would find a curtain here or there. I certainly have things in my stash, like you can see here. I have this one, which I thought would be pretty for her, but I might end up using this for like Snow White skirt. I'm gonna I'm gonna do like a pastel version of Snow White. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling probably again. I, I will ramble a lot in this video. I'm a rambler and here I'm doing it again again. Anyway, so yeah, that's why I am doing Belle's ball gown in gold. And if you look in this picture right here, Ooh, that looked weird, hold on. If you look in this picture right here, uh, you can see that sometimes Disney interprets her gown as gold in the parks anyway. So I think it's okay and it's gonna be recognizable enough. And although I try and make my costumes mostly thrifted, they are only mostly thrifted. Sometimes I have to buy new items. So I bought this really bougie tool from Walmart. It is the nicest tool I've ever used in my life. Usually I just use the 40 yards from Amazon. And then I also went ahead and I bought this golden ribbon from Walmart as well because it just seemed too fitting. And then I have a whole Whole bunch of pretty blingy things that I got from my local creative reuse center which is basically like a thrift store but they only sell craft supplies which is amazing so all of these are second hand as well or aka they're thrifted I'll let you take a little closer look at all of these I don't know if I'll end up using any of them or all of them but they're just an option of things that I have available to me and as you can probably tell from a lot of my other videos I almost always use thrifted thread for this project I'll also be using some interfacing to help keep the bodice from shifting around and keep it a little stiffer but I already have some of that in my stash and I've been using it forever. I also bought these beautiful golden sequiny flowers and I just think they need like a whole minute of this video to be properly appreciated. I only spent about a dollar on them and I was told that if the person at the store was remembering correctly that these were brought in and donated by someone who worked on like belly dancer costumes. So yeah, there's your fun fact of the day. I also bought some of these in hot pink and I thought they might be perfect for like a Barbie movie dress. So we'll see what I do with those. 
And yes, I am aware that Belle's yellow ball gown is usually associated with red roses, but I had some of these white roses, so I thought they might be pretty on the dress, especially because I'm going for gold and elegant. Now, this is how you typically see Belle's ball gown. This is the style, and yes, I know I am not an artist in the sense of that I can't draw. I'm a fiber artist, okay? So please give me, give me some slack, please. Usually, you'll have these nice little swoopy bits. You'll have some straight fabric at the bottom, and then you'll also have that nice little... Um, I don't know what you call that, the thingy, and then people usually add roses to it, and it just looks nice. A sash? Here are two great examples of how the Disney parks have interpreted this into real and life. And here's the second style of the bell dress that you'll commonly see. Instead of any ruching, there's a gathered skirt on the top and the bottom, and the only nod to the ruching will be that sash that commonly has the roses attached to it. And here's an example of how the Disney parks usually interpret that. Now, because I have more sheet and a very limited amount of curtain, I came up with this very complicated plan, sketch, and design of how and where I was going to use the two fabrics. That way they will look like they belong and they're kind of mixed throughout the dress. But I have changed my mind probably four or five times now, so I'm not even going to try and describe what I was trying to explain in that video, and we're just going to move on. Also, I finally took the sheet and I laid it out completely, and I found out that the stripes have stripes. So that was kind of fun, but it didn't really affect the dress too much. It worked out okay. And again, I've changed my mind so many times. I was trying to decide which side of the curtain I wanted to use and let's just say my plans have changed again. I cut out two very long pieces of bed sheet and I sewed those together, gathered them up, and then I sewed them to the upper part of the skirt. The upper part of the skirt is made out of the curtain. And once I had sewn both parts of the skirt together, I gathered up the curtain and I added it to the waistband. Then I put the skirt right sides together and I sewed up the side seam or what will become the back seam, leaving enough space for the zipper. I just popped in the zipper real fast, and when I was done with that, it was time for a hook and eye. I did a little thrift haul at my Creative Reuse Center the other day, and I got some of these great hook and eyes that are for trouser trousers. Uh, and can we just appreciate the savings? This was originally 95 cents down to 74 and then I got it for 25 cents used. And not only that, but this ended up coming with an extra eye, so bonus. And there are a few other things in my little thrift haul that are going to go towards the bell dress, but anyway, I got this cute little snowman decoration craft kit. I got this color changing fabric, which is really cool. Maybe I'll make a corset with that. Don't really know yet. I got a whole bunch of fasteners, and I also got some old jewelry. Look at this cute little mushroom. I didn't even know it was in the bag. This broken earrings that is kind of cool. There's only one of them, but it will work for something. And the main reason I bought this bag of jewelry was for this. Isn't it gorgeous? It's this golden necklace with all these little crystals, and it does not show up very well on camera at all. I got these metallic golden threads for the dress. They'll be perfect. And since I was buying those, I just went ahead and I bought all the metallic shiny threads that they had. They even had these tinsel threads, which I don't think I'll be able to sew with my machine, but they might be good for hand embroidery. And just look how shiny all of these threads are. They're so pretty. So if you have any ideas of what I could do with them, let me know. For the golden ones on Belle's dress, I think I'm going to use them for the exposed boning channels. Oh, and I also got this cute bias tape maker. I've seen these on TikTok a whole bunch, and I thought it might be fun to have one and try it out. And look at this old packaging. It makes me not want to open it. Aren't those flowers adorable? And I am just now realizing that we are already over eight minutes into this video, and I have only shown you how to make the skirt, and even at that, it hasn't even been the whole skirt. So let's move on to the bodice. Instead of using just the right side or the wrong side, I have decided to use both to add a little more depth and a different element into the bodice. Now, will this turn out to be the biggest mistake of my life? Maybe. It's possible. Hopefully not. But once the decision has been decided, it will have been decisioned. So we're going with it. I also decided to use some fusible interfacing on the bodice pieces, the outer bodice pieces, that is. Once I had cut up all of my bodice pieces, I laid those bodice pieces onto the fusible interfacing and I cut out all the pieces that I needed. And once everything was ironed together, I put the right sides of the bodice together and I sewed. Then I created boning channels, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, what is this interfacing stuff and how does it work? Well, interfacing has two sides. You have the regular size and you have the fusible side that has these little glue dotty type things on it. You take the glue dot side and you put it to the wrong side of your fabric. Then you iron. This melts the glue dots onto the fabric and it fuses it together so it stays in place. This helps to add thickness to the fabric and stability. It also helps keep the fabric from shifting around just like this and it helps you to sew everything correctly. You will want your iron to be fairly hot for this and this is how I test. 
take a little bit of spit, and then you put it on your fingers, and you flick it onto the iron, and it should sizzle like a hot pan. Anywho, as I was saying earlier, once I had sewed the pieces right sides together, I started adding the boning channels, and oh, this gold thread is gorgeous! I just took an old burgundy sheet for the lining, I sewed those pieces right sides together, and then I sewed the lining and the bodice right sides together, and sewed everything up. Since I don't own any grommets, I just took that pretty gold ribbon, and I made some little loops for the corset back. You'll kind of be able to see it in this next shot. I'm not laced up all the way though. No heels, heels. No heels, heels. No heels. Spin! The dress is still nowhere near being done, but this is the base. So we have a base skirt and we have a base top. Now this is all the fabric that I have left and I still have to make the sash on the skirt and the sash for the yoke. Before I did anything with either of those pieces of fabric, I went ahead and I ironed everything. And it is just so satisfying. It's like magic. Look at that. The wrinkles just disappear. And here's one more shot if you need any convincing that you should iron all of your fabric. jeans because they're wrinkly and I don't want to iron them myself once I was done ironing my sister's jeans and my fabric for the bell ball gown, I laid everything out and it was looking so good. I took what was left of the sheet, folded it in half, and sewed it right sides together, creating this nice tube. And I just have to say, does this look like a really interesting sleeve that you would see someone wear on the red carpet? Because it totally looks like something some famous person would wear. I don't really know about many famous people, but... Anywho, I took my tube and I flipped everything inside out so that I would have this nice tube. I don't know what else to call it. It's a tube that I'm going to turn into the sash. It looks like this, and all the raw edges are on the inside, so no fray. But you know what else we could call this? We could call this Rapunzel's hair. So here, here's me wearing Rapunzel's hair, or my own Rapunzel hair. Here's me waking up as Rapunzel. Good morning. Here's me brushing my teeth as Rapunzel. Here's me working out as Rapunzel. Here's me cooking as Rapunzel. First, we're going to take this ingredient, and then we're gonna take this ingredient, boom, we have a meal. And here's me dancing as Rapunzel. Dance, dance, dance. Yay! And here's me tangled as Rapunzel. Once I was finally done playing with the sash, I put it onto the skirt and I started draping. And I didn't really like how it was looking. It just wasn't what I had imagined. So I flipped it inside out, cut out all of the seams, and then I sewed everything back together and I had this nice little piecing work of a tube. And then I finished off the raw edges on both the top and the bottom. It was just looking so, so much better. And I kind of wish I had just done this before I had sewn up the entire tube in the first place. But you know what? It's okay. We learn from our mistakes. This is kind of what it looks like just pinned on to the skirt before I do the ruching. Kind of gives you a nice visual aid if you plan on making one of your own. Originally, I was just going to kind of pin and tack the sash into place like this with a regular needle, and then I got out my curved needles, tried it. They were just too thick. I've never used them before, but I would like to try them again. Here's the measurement for the front, the sides, and then the very back sash. For the yoke, I sewed the fabric right sides together, sewing from here, back stitching there, and then sewing from here and back stitching here. That way I could flip it inside out and iron. Unfortunately, I don't have any measurements for the yoke, but you can just kind of play around with it and make your own. It's not that difficult. It's just a rectangle. Once I was done ironing in these pleats, I went ahead and I sewed over them just to keep them a little more in place. Then I gathered together the center front and I tacked it down. Then I took my yoke and I put it on top of the bodice like so, sewing here, here, and here. I also sewed up this simple little modesty panel to add to the back. I top stitch with gold so that the outer part of this would be the golden thread and then for my bobbin thread i used cotton so it'd be soft on my body this is definitely the moment where the dress was really starting to look like belle and even my sister and my mother who were very much doubting me agreed that yes this was starting to look like a bell gown these roses are actually second hand from a mother's day gift we had given our mother years ago i started coming up with different designs that i thought might look nice on the dress using the ribbon the roses and the sequins eventually i ended up landing on this design with sequins covering the sash in between the roses and the ribbon just to add a little spark I actually did my first or what I think is my first ever Instagram poll and I let people vote on the design But I didn't end up using the design that won which was number one So to everybody who voted for number one, I am so sorry But I had to work the next day and I wanted to just finish the dress and I couldn't wait around Waiting for all the votes to come in also I had bought in a second nine foot spool of ribbon and after doing all of the little rose details That's all that I had left that little piece and as you can see in the last shot I just kind of pinned up all of my sequins and my beads getting ready to place them and and kind of figure out how many I wanted before I started sewing them by hand. Also, look at how pretty all these beads are. They're so pretty. Sparkly, sparkly. Also, I had a little visitor while I was sewing. Hi. How are we doing, 
baby girl. Hello. Oh, good night. And then it was actually the next morning and I hadn't actually finished sewing all the sequins on. So I went ahead, I hurried up and did that. There was like 12 more to go. And then it was time for a really quick grand reveal before I went into work. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present the grand reveal. Mm -hmm. 